Hi, I'm Priyanka Chaudhary from Bhubaneswar, Odisha. I own the Gajrath Hills Kennels with my husband, Aditya. Hi, Aditya. Hi. Good to be back on Tailwaggers. I'm Aditya Panda and I'm a wildlife conservationist and naturalist. And I'm a big fan of German Shepherd dogs, which is why uh, we have so many of them at our place. What are your interests apart from dogs? I'm extremely passionate about wildlife. Um, I have been so since childhood. And I'm among those few lucky people who has managed to merge passion and profession. I lead uh, wildlife expeditions for a living. I'm uh, also a very uh, committed wildlife conservationist and a wildlife photographer. And what do you do? Uh, I'm of course a wildlife and dog lover or else how would I marry him? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love traveling too and obviously hanging out with my girlfriends. Great. And would you show us some of the things that you do like photography? You, are a, you uh, said you are a passionate for photographer. So why don't you just show us something about your photography? Come. Let me show you my first camera. When I started photography, I was still in school. And this here was my first camera. This was just about the time when digital photography was beginning to become mainstream and uh, you know this camera is an old film camera so when I started I did not have a digital camera and uh, my uncle had gift gifted me this camera it's a Vivitar V3000S SLR and it's entirely manual everything from the shutter speed to the aperture to the ISO everything had to be set manually and uh, you know you had to use film around 2006 i bought my first uh, digital slr camera and i started with the pentax camera which was uh, because the film slr that i used had a pentax mount and i did not want to invest in a new lens and uh, since 2006 for till about 2019 I used to shoot with a Pentax system and uh, this lens is still as good as new when it comes to work. This lens was my workhorse for over 10 years and some of my finest images have been captured with this lens and this camera. now I have switched to a Nikon system this is a D500 body it's uh, one of the fastest bodies out there and perfect for wildlife it has got a 70 to 200 2.8 lens on it now and this is a 200 to 500 lens which is ideal for safari uh, most of my wildlife work is uh, on safari and this lens is so compact and has such fantastic reach that it's ideal for shooting on safari. I see a lot of books on your shelf. You read a lot? Uh, I do. Uh, most of the books that you'll see here are uh, on wildlife and geography. Some on history, a few novels. Uh, this actually is my grandfather's uh, National Geographic magazine collection. These are all from the 1970s and 80s and these played a huge role in uh, making me the person I am today. When I was a boy, I spent hours going through these magazines. On my desk, I usually have books that I need to refer to every other day. So there are wildlife field guides to help identify birds and snakes and reptiles and things like that. And since we live with so many German Shepherd dogs, and especially around the time when we are uh, breeding a litter, there are these books that I think every German Shepherd enthusiast uh, should read. Essential reading for every German Shepherd enthusiast. These three books uh, are essential reading for anybody who is serious about German Shepherds, especially breeders. Uh, this 
is a very old book. It's from uh, 1949 and uh, it's not outdated. The type of dog that you see on the cover of this book is very outdated by today's standards. This here is my breeding bible. I refer to this book every time I have any question about uh, my dogs, be it about their health or breeding or raising them. And this is also a very old book called All About the German Shepherd Dog uh, by Madeline Pickup. Well, I agree with him because uh, when he was not around when a bitch delivered a litter and, uh, and I had no clue what to do about it. So this actually came in very handy. It, it's full of information and it helped me deliver a healthy litter. This actually does? Yeah. This yes. has that kind of information? Yes, it yes. Does. absolutely helps with one thing. L like it has a step-by-step -step process? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 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 Uh, I was actually uh, traveling abroad hmm. and I was uh, expecting the bitch to litter four or five days after I arrived because going by the normal gestation period, that's what she should have done. But she actually gave birth at 55 days. Oh, okay. Uh, which was not expected. And uh, she was here alone. How do you plan your breeding? You know, one begins planning one's breeding right since the bitch is a puppy. One has to constantly gauge her, gauge her temperament, gauge her anatomy and uh, accordingly plan suitable males to breed her with, uh, you know, when she's of breeding age. You have to check her bloodlines, you have to see uh, what, what bloodlines complement uh, her and uh, you have to always know the pluses and minuses of a dog and make sure that you know the male uh, fulfills all of the minuses that a female has and the female similarly fulfills all of the minuses that the male has and they don't share any negatives between them because that's a sure shot way of having those negatives continue in the puppies. Do you travel um, Pan India to find a suitable male uh, for your breeding programs or do you have males with you? Uh, I do have a male at home uh, but he's only two years old and uh, I have the litter you just saw is out of him but uh, just having a male at home doesn't mean that you start mating him to all your females or you know just because he's a convenient dog that you breed a litter out of him. Uh, as I was mentioning it's very important that the male complements the female and sometimes we do travel across the country I mean there are sh dogs that we see at shows that come from every corner of India and sometimes you might see a dog at a show and like him very much and think he's suitable for this bitch or uh, you know that bitch and uh, then we do uh, take our bitches to far uh, ends of the country to have them mated with a suitable male. What? Um what are these dogs suitable for? What are the puppies that you breed? What are they suitable for? See, the majority of puppies that we breed actually go to regular homes, you know, regular pet homes where they're uh, family dogs or companion dogs. Just because we have pedigreed dogs or just because we show them does not necessarily mean that we breed them wholly and solely for the show ring or only for other breeders to buy them from us. How, how often do you breed? Well, roughly once in a year, uh, once in two years. This year is the first year that I'm actually planning to breed two litters in one year. Every single puppy that I've ever bred, I'm proud to say that I've been, I'm absolutely updated about them till date. I know where each and every puppy ever born out of my kennel is right now and how they're doing. I think that's very important for every ethical breeder to do and that's also something that prospective buyers need to think about. What would you advise prospective uh, pet parents to look for before they finalize a breed or before they finalize or adopt or buy a puppy? First of all, be 100%, be 200% sure that you want a dog. Why do you want a dog? Is it only to, you know, uh, do with loneliness, is it to gift somebody, is it to just look nice at home, those are not valid reasons to have a dog. Having a dog is a 15 year commitment, it's a full time commitment. It's like having a child, so you really need to plan very very well and be very very sure before taking home a puppy. No puppy deserves to be just thrown out 
at six months or seven months or two years just because it becomes a hassle. Be very sure why you want a dog. Be very sure what you want out of a dog. Once you know what you want out of a dog, read up on the different breeds. See which breed meets your requirements, suits your temperament. It can be comfortable in the kind of space and lifestyle you have. And only then decide to buy a puppy. And then find a good reputed breeder of that particular breed. Go have a look at the puppies, learn from the breeder. Of course, I presume you must have read up a lot about that breed before you do this and only then go and buy a puppy. What is your uh, feeding uh, or exercise regimen for, the, for your dogs? The German Shepherds require a lot of exercise. They are working dogs, herding dogs and uh, I am fortunate to have plenty of space uh, where the dogs can uh, play and run and exercise and tire each other out. Uh, since I have a pack it's easier because the dogs play with each other and tire each other out. That apart we take them for walks and runs and occasional swims and sometimes running beside a bicycle. Uh, as for uh, feeding, I think uh, canine nutrition is very very simple. People make too much out of it but a dog is a carnivore. All carnivores require raw whole animals to eat and that's what we feed our dogs. We feed them raw whole chicken. And we never bother too much about uh, you know supplements and perfect balances and things like that because a natural diet is naturally perfectly balanced. I have puppies who had been weaned at 21 days right on to raw meat and are 5 years, 6 years old now and have never needed any supplements throughout their lives and have only seen vets for their vaccinations. It was a pleasure to be on Tailwaggers again. For more information on dogs, Please subscribe Tailwaggers on YouTube.